Dr. Roy Walford, who is here to tell us that we may be able to double our lifespan in, what, maybe 15 years? Oh, 15 years, maybe we're less, lucky. maybe a bit more, yes. But we will uh, like talk about that a little bit later. You are, of course, an immunologist and a professor of pathology at UCLA, and That's Dr. Correct. Timothy Leary was on our program and mentioned uh, to us about some of your findings. Before we get into that, though, let's go back a little bit in time. Today, the average lifespan of the average American is 74 years of age, which is, sounds a lot to those people who are living hundreds and hundreds of years ago. When did that occur, and at what point was the, the largest stride made in terms of increasing our lifespan? Well, the largest stride was probably made from the 17th century up till now. In ancient Rome, average lifespan was about 22 years. Mm. Then with progress in public health and better hygiene and some progress in medicine, it gradually increased until about 1900. It was still only about 45 or 50 years, but since then it's gone up to about 74 years. That's average lifespan. Average lifespan means the time at which half of the population who were born will have been dead, 50% survival. That's average lifespan. It's now 74, 75 years in the U.S. In Sweden, it's up to 78 or 79. That's the longest lived Do we know why it's higher in Sweden than here? Oh, I think just because of uh, environmental factors, diet, uh, general uh, educational level, and people take personal hygiene, better care of themselves, medical care, things like that. That's the reason. People seem to be obsessed with aging here in our country. Uh, all the ads that you see have all the young women in them and the young men having a great time with gusto and zest for life. The cosmetics in industry has not uh, seemingly all been hurt by our recession. What is aging? How would you define it? Well, aging, you can define it by a survival curve is mm -hmm. the way that the scientists would define it. That is, if you begin with a hundred animals or people in a population, how long before half of them are dead and how long before the last one is dead? This finally would be maximum survival. Survival in the human population is about 110 years. And this hasn't budged since ancient time, even though average survival has gone from 22 years way up to 74 years, 22 years ancient Rome, 74 years today. Still in ancient Rome, a few people would live to be 110, especially senators, hmm. things like that, Seneca and so forth. But uh, nobody lived longer, and the same is true today. So this means that actually the rate of aging, which is better measured by this maximum survival, has not changed since ancient Rome. But what specifically happens to the body? When you're older, things take longer to heal. If you get a cut as a child, it heals almost mm -hmm. instantly. Mm -hmm. If you're an older person, it takes mm -hmm. weeks, sometimes mm -hmm. months, for mm -hmm. bones, cuts, and everything mm -hmm. to heal. Why is that? What happens in the body that, that we break down somehow? Well, there's an increasing vulnerability with age. That's the other way to define aging, an increasing vulnerability to minor onslaughts from the environment or other things. What happens is that each organ system ages kind of independently, but they also age together. One of the main pacemakers of aging is the immune system. It's the area that I work in immunology. With uh, The way to think about that is uh, the immune system exists to repel invaders, bacteria, mm -hmm. foreign proteins, ragweed pollen, hay fever, and stuff like that. So the immune system manufactures antibodies, tiny proteins that combine with any invader and eliminate it. The ability to do this declines with age. Do we know why, though? I mean, what changes? All of a sudden, one day, you know, you get a back pain and you're feeling that you're getting older. Mm -hmm. But why? Well, that gets to another level. Let me tell you why we age first. All okay? right. <laughs> this declines with age to about 10% of its peak value. At the same time that this is going on, the immune system begins to react against the body. If you get a kidney graft from another person, your body recognizes it as being foreign and rejects it. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, your body can't reject your own kidney or your own heart or your own brain. Or it's not supposed to. It's supposed to tell the difference between self and non-self. With age, this deteriorates, and part of aging, part of the wrinkles and the kidney disease and everything, is the body reacting against itself. Hmm. Okay. Now, the next question is why all this happened. Mm -hmm. That goes to a deeper level in biology, and you don't really know the answer about that. There are a number of theories. One good theory is the DNA repair theory. Which means that DNA breaks down and can no longer do what it was before, but there, there is an ability to repair this. This is one of the things you're working on. There is an ability to repair DNA, yes. The DNA, you know, you have a long strand of the double helix of the DNA, and in the course of normal metabolism, different things happen to it all the time. 
scientists used to think that it was kind of a long, stable uh, kind of a uh, substance. Uh, as a matter of fact, the DNA in one cell is about six feet long if you stretch it all hmm. out. You used to think that it was stable like a blueprint or a template off which the body could read how to build proteins. But we now know that it's constantly the strand breaks and it develops different little chemicals that get stuck to it, which are called adducts and a number of other, there's six or seven possible different things that happen to it. And the body has different ways of repairing this damage that's constantly happening. It has a series of enzymes, for example, that go along and read out the DNA strand and stitch it up if it needs a break or removes the adduct if it's stuck to it. This repair rate is proportional to the maximum lifespan between species. That's a very important uh, correlation found by some people at Ohio State University about four or five years ago. Man has the highest, DNA, the best DNA repair rate, and he's the longest lived species. Hmm. Mouse lives only three years, and he has a poor DNA repair rate. And other animals, if you study their DNA repair, fall kind of on a straight line. You can correlate the extent of DNA repair with maximum lifespan. And yet, Doctor, some people live to be a hundred. Uh, is that genetics? I mean, uh, if my father is going to die when he's, you know, 65 and your father lived till he's 90, don't you have a much greater chance of having a longer lifespan than I will? There's a fairly heavy genetic component to it. But if you have, like, maximum genetics, if you're the best genetically endowed person, then you might live to be 100 to 110. If your genetics is not so good, then you you're apt to be uh, destined to live only to mm -hmm. be 70 or 80, assuming that <laughs> an automobile doesn't get you first. Or <laughs> You've mentioned uh, 110 as being the maximum, and yet I understand there are people in Russia in a specific region called Georgia that live to be 120, even 130. How do you account for that? Well, it isn't true. To it begin isn't with. <laughs> No, it's not true. There are three so-called long-lived population isolates in the world that have been a bit popularized. One of the Russians. And the problem with all of them is that there's no adequate documentation for how old they really are. Taking the one that you mentioned in Soviet Georgia, uh, most of the people there uh, have taken documents from their father or their brother or something. This was done by deserters from the Red Army or the White Army during the Re Revolution. It was done by people in that region in order to escape the Tsar's tax collectors and the Tsar's soldiers who would come down and try to impress them into the military. So you're saying they're lying and using other yeah, people's birth yeah, certificates. Yeah. Why would they want to do that? I mean, to desert and all those reasons, yes, but why would they need to say, well, I'm 120, I'm yeah. 100, 130 years old, if it's not true? Because it's an honor to be old in that society. Uh, if the tradition of being very old is built up, it's an honor to be, it's promoted, and they just promote it or drift into it. If you're 85, you're just an old codger. Nobody's too interested in you. But if you're 110, everybody's very interested in you. So this gets promoted. That's true. Also, the Russian government tries to promote this because it proves communism works. Oh, that's true. We have to take a commercial stuff. break. When we come back, I'd like to ask you about other factors in aging. Diet. Uh, the other thing is pollution, the environment, right. and how big a factor that plays for us here in the United States.